I really appreciate Paul's spirit as he starts this portion of his letter to the, his second letter to the church in Corinth, because you can see some of his exasperation with the community. He starts off, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Surely we don't need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you, do we? I mean, it's kind of like he's, he's like, are we at this again, really? And what I appreciate about the spirit of Paul's questioning here is that he's trying to draw out what it is that gives us credibility. And from there, it feels as if he's asking us to think, in what do we have our strength and our confidence? And he's clear about that. And that is what I wanna focus on today. In what do we have our confidence? So we've been talking and I always wanna know how you are, how you're coping, what you're celebrating, what you're hoping for. And we've been talking about all this and there's something that I wanna talk about today, which is again, confidence. And what I'd like to assert here is that there is in this time, probably not for the first time, but certainly present now, an assault on our confidence. What do I mean by that? People I've known who have understand how to put themselves forward, how to take certain risks, how to step into things that might not be familiar, but could feel right, right now seem to have a new form of reticence that they're struggling against, we are struggling against, with reservations that, that maybe we thought we had put aside or that we've never really had before. And some of this makes good sense. I mean, we see it in the labor market. It's fundamentally shifting in this country. People are saying no to certain kinds of work and workers aren't taking what they used to. And that is good, right? But meanwhile, there are also things that we actually do want to do that have become more difficult than ever before. And I think a major factor in this is just that our confidence. It could be something like going for a job, but it also could be something of way lower stakes, like seeing our friends. And as I talk to you, what I'm hearing is that a major determinant of whether or not you're willing to take that next step has to do with your sense of confidence right now. And where do you find your confidence? What does it come from? In the US, this tends to come from that old Calvinist work ethic and let's break that down. If we find our confidence in our work, for example, then that is certainly gonna be troubled during a pandemic that has record numbers of people in unemployment or underemployment or financial peril, right? And work, even if we've had it, been blessed to have it in this time, has still been quite different, right? The work product is different. But even if you haven't been you know, underemployed or unemployed, perhaps you as I have find your confidence not so much in your work, but in your productivity. And even though hard work tends to satisfy the needs of the capitalist overlords over our own wellness, our culture still holds this as the gold standard of worth and confidence. Maybe that's not you, but I've also had a number of conversations with you about something else, about how our aesthetics play into our sense of confidence. And this is a big one, especially during a season where so many of us can't even remember how to get dressed. There's a great article about this in the Washington Post yesterday. We can't even remember how to get dressed. We aren't able to pull on the visual markers of confidence we might've had in times past, pandemic or not. Or perhaps we wanted that sense of confidence in our aesthetics, but never quite had it. And in that piece that I was talking about in the post, Ellen McCarthy wrote this, and I wanna read it to you a bit of it. Americans are beginning to stir from their pandemic bunkers, drawn by the promise of safe socializing, and for those lucky enough to have worked remotely, the obligation to return to the office in person. But there's just one problem. 
We've forgotten how to get dressed. Oh, sure, pants on one leg at a time, all that. But what if when you pull those pants up to your waist, there is no soft ribbon of elastic to hold them in place? The muscles required to fasten buttons and other complicated garment closures atrophied many moons ago, along with our ability to make polite conversation and shower on the regular. We've aged approximately 20 years in the past 15 months, all the while expanding or contracting according to our stress levels and snack stockpiles. Many of us don't even know how to step out of the house and be seen. And for a bunch of us, we've learned to build up our confidence with tricks. I wanna say that again. A bunch of us have learned to build up our confidence with tricks, like looking good in pants we can't even figure out how to fasten whether they fit or not. And though maybe that kind of trick might give a sense of confidence that source of confidence never fit anyway. And when we don't like what the mirror or what the camera or what our checklist has to say, how is it that we turn away from the tricks and we build real confidence? Just last week, I was invited to a gathering of colleagues that's coming up next week. And um, the invitation sounded very exciting, a chance to reconnect in a very COVID strict environment. But then I noticed something that was feeling rough for me that I couldn't quite explain. I didn't know what it was for a while. But then as the, on the invitation, it said that we were to, the dress code was chic. Knowing that we might not remember exactly understand what that meant. My beloved colleague stipulated that this means no sweatpants, no jeans, which makes sense. And when would I ever wear such things to an event anyway? And yet, and yet I panicked. I can't wear my beloved sweatpants. What am I supposed to do? And for days, I peered into my closet wondering what I could possibly wear, what would fit. I didn't even want to know. So I didn't even find out I couldn't. Because how those clothes look was so closely tied to how I extracted, tricked myself into confidence, right? I couldn't take the risk of losing that. I didn't want to try on the clothes because I didn't want them not to fit, which made this event a real problem because it forced me to confront that. And as it turns out, a lot of us use tricks like these. We employ these tricks to build what we think of as confidence, to buoy us up when we feel like we might sink and look good, produce more, post more often, call more often, more, more, more of whatever culture is valuing right now. Just do it and you can convince yourself that you're ready. But those are mind tricks because you see, they're so very contingent on the moment and on factors that can be fickle and unreliable. And when your confidence is tethered to acts that skim the surface of who you are, that's not confidence at all. It's a trick you've played on yourself. And I promise you, it does not last. Take it from me with my own repeated firsthand experience. And if you know what I'm talking about, drop in a chat and say something. But if what we wear, whether clothes or work values or whatever, can never sufficiently source our confidence, what can? If we, wanna, if we wanted to put on something to give us confidence, what might that be? And what I would say in short is maybe we cloak ourselves with the mantle of Christ, with something that no one can or will ever take away from us. Maybe we adorn ourselves with God's love and God's glory and feel a full sense of confidence that God's grace is sufficient for everything that we truly need. And what do I mean? 
let's just start here with the truth that you, my friend, belong to God. You belong to God. And when you belong to God, you can have confidence that God will have you take you. You can live in boldness. You can come out. You can walk in faith. You can count on God's grace. Grace will step in when your work falls short and your clothes don't fit. Grace will step in when your family isn't where you need them to be and your friends aren't getting it. God's grace is the source and it's an unending source of true confidence. So have confidence in God's grace and love it because that grace flows like water, like an ever flowing stream. Have confidence in God, but then let that lead to a confidence in God to do things, right? Do you see that shift? Have confidence in God. And from that confidence, know that God will do things. Be confident in God to do certain things. And what can we count on God to do? And here's what I think we could all stand to hear. When it is that you've reached the end of your rope, when it is that you feel like you can't summon the courage, and when you wonder how you possibly can, what do you do? You get started and you let God take you with God moving forward. You get started and you let God take it from there. You give it a shot. You take the risk. You take the first step. You step out boldly. And as you do what you do, here's what you say to yourself. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can you say that? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Your strength, your capabilities, your possibilities, you can live into all of this through Christ Jesus who will give you that strength. And if you're not finding the strength just yet, just wait for God to give it to you. You can have confidence that it's coming. And when you don't have that strength, be confident that God does. And as you experience that, and as you have, to God be the glory. And when we say, to God be the glory, that means that we don't have to be the source or even the destination of our glory. We don't have to do that because we can have the confidence that it's already there in God. Beloved, can you hear me? I want you to be relieved of the burden of your worries that strips you of your God-given confidence. We're worried, some of us to the point of clinical anxiety, and we need help for that too, professionally. But meanwhile, I encourage you to live into your God-given confidence. Or like Jesus said, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Because he knew that we just needed to turn it over, to give it to God. And as we do, we have confidence that God will be and already is addressing our deepest spiritual needs. What happens when we're not confident? For the event I mentioned, some of my colleagues are worried and concerned that they're not gonna be able to summon what it takes to go. I reached out to one to share some of my own anxieties and she said, you know what? I've been on a chain with about 20 people who are all feeling the same way. And so they're worried that they're not going to be able to summon the courage to just go to this event, which means that they're going to continue to stay in and cocoon if they can't find that courage, if they can't find the confidence to step out. And to, when we cocoon, we miss the chance of fellowship to get started on resuming our life with others. And that lack of confidence will hold us in and hold us back. And it'll keep us from moving forward. And if that's you or someone you know, I want you to hear that you are in good company. Maybe even in the company of Jesus himself. Do you remember 
how Jesus worried in the garden. He worried. He was so worried in the garden. He didn't know how he was going to take that next step. Let this cup pass from my hands, oh God. Oh, Father, let this cup pass, he he prayed. But you know what? Through all that, he always had confidence in the power of God. And it was that confidence that helped him to face the next day. Jesus expected God's provision. That is confidence. To expect God's provision is true confidence. And what did Jesus do when he needed the strength? Do you remember? He prayed. He got on his knees and he prayed. He prayed so long the disciples fell asleep, but he prayed because he was confident He had the confidence that he could expect God's provision. Psalm 55 says, cast your prayers on the Lord and the Lord will sustain you. God will meet you in that place. God will meet you in your garden. Just as God met Jesus at Gethsemane, just as God met Jesus at Golgotha, just as God met Jesus at that tomb, just as God will meet you, even if you're finding yourself entombed right now. Do you hear this? I don't know if you're in your own place waiting for the confidence to emerge. Maybe it's even a tomb, but that door is already open and the strength you need abounds. And then when you can feel it, when you can step up and step out, my God, my God, let's give God some praise. Cast your prayers on God. Let yourself be open to God coming to visit with you for a spell to sit with you and to give you the strength you need and then to hold your hand as you try and you give it a shot. That's happening right now. In that, in that alone, you can have full confidence. Thanks be to God.